Welcome to One Insight. My name is Rich Litvin. I grew up in London and I now live in LA. And this is a podcast for extraordinary top performers and their coaches. You see, I've coached some of the most successful and talented people on the planet. I can see what most people cannot see. And I dare to say what most people wouldn't dare to say. And what I know about success is that on the other side of it, it can be incredibly lonely. You can feel more of an imposter the more successful you become. And when you're the most interesting person in the room, you're actually in the wrong room. Clients who are more successful, more intelligent and wealthier than you need your support more than they know and more than you can imagine. I coach around insight. Life looks one way, something happens and the world looks different and your entire world changes. It can happen in an instant. And this podcast is called One Insight because a single insight can change everything. What do you do? Oh, it's such a hard and easy question at the same time. The problem is most coaches make the mistake of thinking they need to answer the question and you need to be creative with the question. You know, nobody really wants a boring answer. They want an interesting answer. So you've got to find a way to be interesting when you articulate the answer to that question. So David, I'm about to work with David and you're going to see me or listen to me, um, ask him, you know, how can I help you? And he says, well, you know, I hear people often ask me these two questions, tell me about yourself and what is it that you do? And so I help him draw out answers to these questions that are so powerful that he feels them in his body. But we can't do this for ourselves. We need someone who can draw out those stories. So the first few minutes, I'm drawing out his story. In the last few minutes, I'm articulating it back to him in a way that really lands in his body. I normally charge $10,000 to do this. And really, as you'll hear in the last three minutes, that's what I'm being paid $10,000 for. Those three minutes when I articulate his story. And I've got to draw it out of him first. I'm not making this up. And I'm not a copywriter. I'm not trying to create text for a website, even though it's often used, could be used in that way. I'm listening to this man deeply, finding out who he is, what makes him come alive. And you'll hear I draw out this little story about why he loves Billy Idol and why he needs to start talking to his the leaders of billion-dollar corporations, his current clients, about Billy Idol. Enjoy. Hi, David. Hey, Rich. Hey. So you tell me what would make this an amazing conversation today. I think one of the hardest questions I've ever been asked, Rich, is, so tell me about yourself. What is it that you do? The how, I think I can speak to that. But the what, that's hard sometimes to be able to come up with a clear statement that translates meaning and or value behind it. And so I've seen you be able to do that with other people before, that would make this a really powerful conversation. Yeah, that's a really great catch. Too many coaches, hey, what do you do? Oh, let me tell you, it's called ontological coaching. Let me tell you about my coaching methodology. Oh, I'm a consultant. I'm trained in these three modalities. Nobody cares. They literally don't care. They know I have this problem. Can you help? I want this result. Can you help? So that's all you need to speak to. At some point, some of them might ask a bit more about your modalities and how you work. Truthfully, most of them won't. If they get, wow, you really understand my problem, or I have a sense you can really help me, or, or you already have helped me, they're in. They need to know your methodology they don't care about. So we don't lead with that. Now, you said, yeah, people tend to ask me, tell me about yourself. What is it that you do? And I want to pull those two apart because they're actually two separate questions. Tell me about yourself is different from, what do you do? Now, what you have to do when someone asks you a question is be a bit like a politician when they're being interviewed on TV. They're asked question X and they answer question A. They don't care what you ask them, they're going to give the answer that they want. And that's what you have to do because the trouble is with leaders in the corporate world is they don't know what they need. So they're asking the questions they think they need to ask. You've got to help them find out what they actually need. So I'm going to ask you a question right now. And I don't want you to answer as David, because if you answer as yourself, you put humility first, you're, you're, you're humble, you're modest. We don't need that. Let me ask you to put yourself in the, in the shoes, in the mindset of 
the leaders of one or two corporations that you've helped or you've had a big impact, whether you were working in the corporation or consulting to them. What are three things that people would say when David comes to work for us, with us, on us, these things happen? Let me just be clear, Rich, but I'm not speaking as myself as a coach coming to that. I'm speaking as the leader of that organization. Tell me an organization you consulted with recently. Uh, well, I'd rather not name it, Rich, but I'll, right. I'll speak to the organization. Right. Uh, here's something that would come up. Here's what the leader would No, no, say. no, no. Uh, so give me a sense of this is an organization in the hospitality field. Uh, uh, what, what is it? Uh, organization in technology. Right. And um, is this a, a, an established company yes. or is it a startup? Uh, uh, not a startup, established in the sense that they're, they're sizable, there are resources, but certainly in the growth game. Great. Uh, what kind of size are we talking, either revenue or number of employees? Uh, well, well, let's go with both there. Let's okay. say on this one that I'm thinking about a billion dollars and let's call it um, 200 employees. Great. Now, what was their single biggest problem when they came and knocked on your door or you knocked on theirs? The CEO wanted to be able to get to a place where he could lead the company to its next level of success, which in this case was growth, but that was going to require a lot of change. Mm -hmm. What did the CEO think the problem was? If the CEO articulated that problem back then, before you began working with them, what would they have said? Here's the single biggest problem we have. About him or about the company? Uh, the the company, often it's about him, but he usually doesn't see that. I see your smile. Um, what did he think the problem? Did he say, I want to get to the next level of success and we're going to have to have, face massive change? I'm imagining he didn't say those words. It, it wasn't exactly like that, but he felt that he knows exactly how to get there. He can just put it out and drive it forward. The problem is people don't always, one, get it, two, understand, three, follow. So call it followership if you want to make it simple. Great. Make it be clear though, Rich, not that he couldn't get people there, but that was his concern. How to do that in the, because he could just say, this is what we need to go do. That mm -hmm. wouldn't get him there. And stylistically, that was his way. And and he he understood that because often leaders don't know that. They, they like the level of self-awareness, which is why I think this particular person is a dream client. Ah, great. So great catch already. You work with high-level leaders who have high levels of self-awareness. Yes. So that's one of the things you've got to begin to articulate if you're not already, because that's really, really key. That that we're we're talking about the top five percent, if that, of any leader in of a billion dollar corporation, not not many of them have self-awareness. Very much top down. This is how it's done. Do it my way. I'll throw in another, maybe it's a wild card, Rich, but something that did come out in this same situation. He was actually interested in, in, in coming to this conversation in understanding what he did not know. The old, I don't know what I don't know, mm -hmm. recognized that, but wanted to know what that was. In simple terms, we might say, what were the blind spots? He wanted to know what the blind spots were. Mm. Yeah, this is great. This is a, this is a lot of self-awareness. It is. It's great. So uh, would I be right? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go generic for a second. But if I got off the call and I spoke to somebody and I said, uh, hey, I was talking to a friend of mine. His name is David. Um, let me tell you the kind of clients he works with. They're high-level leaders who are running massive organizations, even a billion-dollar corporation. Um, they, they know that massive change is coming or that they want to be ahead of that by creating the massive change first. However, they have very high levels of self-awareness. So before they walk into that, they want to see what the blind spots are first. Spot on. Okay, great. Great. I mean, already we have a differentiator because most leaders don't think like that. They're like, okay, you're a consultant. Tell me what are the seven steps we need to take 
to handle VUCA, volatility, uncertainty, et cetera. They, they, they all know the, 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 this is how it's supposed to be done. Now we're, we're differentiating already the kind of leaders you work with. Great. What do you actually do with him? I am helping him to step outside himself and see how he shows up in the world. Mm -hmm. it's, it's as if holding up a mirror and allowing him to be able to see that mirror. And when he doesn't see what may be showing up in that mirror, I point that out mm -hmm. in a very direct way. What was the result of doing all this? Give me a headline. What happened? Uh, the, the senior team got rid of their worst players and hired some great new people. Uh, bottom line went up by this amount. Give, give me a, 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 some, some he a a headline. headlines. A, a couple that would speak to, you know, and maybe, maybe these ratchet up a little bit. Here's an initial one. He was able to have conversations where he was at one time listening less and less powerful and less clear in what he was trying to express in a completely different manner, and then able to replicate consistently the ability to do so. Prior conversations where he would walk in feeling very uncomfortable, um, very off balance, he was able to walk in with some level of confidence and able to leave with more confidence, I should add, but feeling that he both shared his perspective, but also listened to what was being said in the meeting. Mm -hmm. That was a change. Because like many senior leaders, definitely a high level driver. So he's drive, drive, drive. Mm -hmm. But this was a little bit of, I would even say, slowing down. Mm -hmm. Two, another one, which, which I would say is uh, big as well, a big decision around what's the next step for the company? What does that need to look like? Is it focusing on the present? Is it launching the next, call it business within the organization? Is it creating a partnership with someone else? You helped him clarity, get clear clarity around all of those aspects and which direction he believes is right, right for the organization and right for him as a leader. Okay. So let me run something past you, see how this lands. A couple of questions for background. How long have you been working in the corporate world from your very entry point in the early days, all the way till now? 25 years. What positions have you held in the corporate world yourself when you were, when you were in it? Literally like all of them, the gamut rich or the highest one I held? Oh yeah, yeah, let's, let's, let's go through all of them. I'm, I'm... I started at a manager, well, I started as a consultant. Mm -hmm meaning internal consultant, right? So inside, but as the, you know, titling as a consultant, mm -hmm. I, I uh, grew through manager uh, to senior manager, to director, to senior director, to vice president. The highest position I ever held was by title, senior vice president, the equivalent of a chief learning officer. That really is the gamut. I like it. It's it's uh, that's a bit of time there, but it it was yeah. Um, I know you've worked in uh, for Walt Disney Studios for Disney Consumer Products, so you've worked at Disney in all sorts of levels. What what uh, can you mention? Any other any other organizations you work for where where it would be a headline that we know that name? Uh, don't know if you'd know the name because they're private equity held. I've worked for large consulting firm, 
large executive search, but again, not necessarily on the same Fortune 100 type of headline. Clientele-wise, yep. I've had a whole host of them. Can you mention a couple of names to me? Sure. I mean, any of the studios from Paramount to Comcast to Universal, NBC Universal, to technology like Qualcomm. Great. To Amazon. Nice. Um, why do these companies normally call you? Probably not the greatest answer, Rich, but it's, it is what it is. It depends. So I would say there's several areas I could get called in. Sometimes it may be there's a coaching need. Um, we have a person who is two types of situations. One, they are primed or literally been just promoted into X position. Primed meaning in six to you know 18 months, they are on the succession plan to move up into a role. And we want to prepare them to do so, or they are dealing with that transition and we want them to hit the ground running. And so giving them some support from development perspective. Another situation would be when they're looking at their next step and they're not sure what that needs to be, I'll call that transition again. And the factors that tend to come up in that, I'll, I'll give two. One would be around presence, how that person again is showing up. And the other would be around how that person orients in the, I'll use corporate speak here, Rich, in the navigation of organization dynamics. What is that? politics within the organization. How is the person navigating? And presence directly relates into that. Mm -hmm. That is one bucket, if you will. And I'll give one other big bucket, which could be around the likes of team effectiveness, a senior leader's team, mm -hmm. how they're orienting and getting along, leadership development, which could be around programs, or facilitation of some type of exercise keynote presentation specific more to a skill or content. Mm -hmm. So if I was going to put this under an umbrella that captures all of this, would I be correct that you've been in talent development for over 25 years? Yes. Okay, great. I'm going to play. I want to, I want to articulate who you are and what you do, and let's see what comes um, and I have in front of me some of my notes from earlier as I was looking at your website and your LinkedIn profile. So you may see me looking at the screen. That's what I want to bring in. Oh, good. Rock and roll. Yeah, great. Oh, th that was great. I'm glad you said rock and roll. <laughs> Who is it? Oh, Billy Idol, isn't it? Billy Idol is one of your favorite artists ever. Growing up, it was, Rich. I, I think you know because you've seen the picture. Platinum yeah. hair. I mean, that, that's, I'm still thinking about it, Rich. I'm still thinking of going back to it at some point. Uh -huh. While I still have hair. Oh, I think I challenged you to, to, to bleach your hair by the time we meet up in Curacao for 4PC. That's, it. that's right. Um, so what, what can a leader learn from Billy Idol? What's a lesson that Billy Idol has got to teach around leadership? Came from nothing, and it didn't matter didn't let that stand in his way. When a door was in front of him, he kicked it in. Now, that could be a little bit of a harsh way of going about it, but it gets a result. Mm -hmm. So, you know, gets what he's after. And um, I, I would say two other things. One, so there's that rebellious side, a, a level of a reverence to not be afraid to say whatever needs to be said, speak it or in his, in his part, sing it out or, you know, anthem it, if you will but then also make it acceptable to a mass audience. Mm. There's a level of, you know, pop adoption, despite he came from the punk world. Mm -hmm. That's pretty cool to me. He, he's one of the few that transitioned over from what was punk, you know, in the 70s to pop stardom in the 80s. Wow. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's play. I'm gonna be you. I'm gonna articulate this as if I'm you and we'll see what comes. My name is David Udis. I'm a coach, a consultant, a trusted advisor, 
to people like the CEO of a billion dollar organization, the president of a Fortune 100 defense organization, senior vice presidents, chief technology officers, chief financial officers, Fortune 100, Fortune 200 organizations. I've been in talent development at every level for over 25 years. I began my consult career as a consultant and I'm still a consultant, but in that time, I was also a manager, a senior manager, a director, a senior director, and a senior vice president. Spent more than a decade with the Walt Disney Company. My consulting clients include Paramount, Comcast, Universal, Universal NBC, Qualcomm, and Amazon. I've worked for private equity held executive search companies and have my own firm. What I do is I work with high level leaders who are ready for their next level of success, bringing massive change to big organizations. But I filter very carefully. You see, I only work with high level leaders who already have a high level of self-awareness. Not many leaders see their own blind spots. The ones who do are the ones who call me. But here's the thing. Even if you know you have blind spots, you still can't always see them. And so what we do is we hold up a mirror to show you what you cannot see. Let me give you an example of what happens when high-level leaders come and work with me. We work around two areas that are key to your next level of success. One, increasing the impact and the power of the conversations that you have. When you work with me, you'll increase your confidence. Despite being one of the most confident people around, one of the most confident people that you know, your confidence still has places where it can increase. But it will increase in unusual ways because we'll increase your ability to listen deeply to the, the people around you, which in turn will increase your power and impact, will increase your ability to hold discomfort, will increase your ability to slow down. So in places and in meetings and scenarios where in the past you felt off balance, that's no longer the case. So as well as increasing the impact you have in the conversations that you have at every level from the, the board of directors to your most junior employee will increase your ability to make challenging decisions in uncertain circumstances. So you'll always know the next step. Absolute clarity from the inside out. I've been in talent development for 25 years because I work in four ways. I help leaders develop themselves, develop their senior team, develop their teams, build team effectiveness. Number two, increase their executive presence and then use that to navigate the complexity of organizational dynamics. But here's the secret. What most people don't know about me is that my hero as a youngster was Billy Idol. I was in a band. I used to perform with bleached hair just like Billy Idol. And let me tell you the secret to Billy Idol leadership. He was one of the few performers who transitioned from the world of punk to the world of pop. That was unheard of. And here's how he did it. Number one, he kicked doors open. He wasn't afraid to say what he needed to say. He was a rebel, a rebel and he was irreverent. But he found a way to become accepted by mass audiences. We're going to help you get to the next level of your leadership to create massive change, both within your organization and in the world. That's what I do. That's who I am. And that's why extraordinary leaders call me. Pun intended, that was rich. <laughs> Meaning that was the best representation of me I've probably ever heard. Yeah. As you, as you, as you grew. I, I, I charge $10,000 to do that normally. I know. That's why. As, as you, as you grew through it, you know, the first part is a little bit of a review, which I totally, you know, I get that, but, but that's not so differentiating. I get it as a setup as you went on though. Wow. Those differentiating pieces that landed rich, that was the richest part. 
Well, the first part is me drawing out your story. I'm trying to get a sense of who you are. Yeah. I'm not making this stuff up. Right. I need to ask those questions. It was only the last three minutes. That, that's what I charged $10,000 for those last three minutes when I articulate somebody's story in a way they can't do for themselves. Now, I guarantee, I bet you're good at doing this for other people, David. I think I am, Rich, but I'm not good at doing it for myself. Well, just like the leaders you work with, this our blind spots include looking at ourselves is why I started the conversation by saying, don't you tell me who you are in the world. If you were one of your clients or one of the leaders you work, what would they say? Because then we can step out of ourselves. Oh, well, they'd say this, but we can't. So we can't do this work for ourselves. So I, I love this, you know, run with this, begin to articulate this into the world, put this text on your website. There's real power in this. The Billy Idol piece was cool, Rich. Yeah, well, that's what makes you different. When you can say, look, here's what most people know about me is I've worked with billion dollar corporations, worked for the Disney organization, but what most people don't know about me. And what also dawns on me, which is related to this, David, your website, it's very corporate. Yeah, I know. And, and, and I think it's time. You have the gravitas now to be able to embrace the Billy Idol part of, part of stuff. You know, it doesn't need to be so buttoned up on the website any longer. Bring a sense of irreverence. Bring the rebel yell into the, into the website. That's cool. Thanks, man. Thank you, Rich. For most of human history, it wasn't called coaching. It was called leadership. And it's what I love to do, to coach people, to lead people, and to mess with people's thinking. If you'd like more of this, or if you'd like to learn more about our community of extraordinary top performers, go to richlitvin.com forward slash one insight.